Good morning, friends. We are on Wilfred Owen, Arms and the Boy. Let the boy try along this bayonet blade, how cold steel is, and keen with hunger of blood. Blue with all malice like a madman's flash, and thinly drawn with famishing for flesh. Lend him to stroke these blind, blunt bullet leads, which long to nuzzle in the hearts of lads. Or give him cartridge of fine zinc teeth, sharp with the sharpness of grief and death. For his teeth seem for laughing round an apple. There lurk no claws behind his fingers supple, and God will grow no talons at his heels, nor antlers through the thickness of his curls. Greater Love Red lips are not so red as the stained stones kissed by the English dead. Kindness of wooed and wooer seems shame to their love pure. O oh, love, your eyes lose lure when, when I behold eyes blinded in my stead. Your slender attitude trembles not exquisite like limbs knife skewed. Rolling and rolling there, where God seems not to care, till the fierce love they bear cramps them in death's extreme decrepitude. Their voice sings not so soft, though even as wind murmuring through raftered loft, your dear voice is not dear, gentle and even and clear, as theirs whom none now hear. No earth has stopped their piteous mouths that coughed. Hearts you were never hot, nor large, nor full like hearts made great with shot, and though your hand be pale, Paler, all, paler are all which trail your cross through flame and hail. Weep, you may weep, for you may not, for you may touch them not. Insensibility. Happy are men who yet before they are killed can let their veins run cold, whom no compassion fleers, or makes their feet sore on the alleys cobbled with their brothers. The front line withers, but they are troops who fade, not flowers. For poets tearful fooling, men, gaps for filling, losses who might have fought longer, but no one bothers. And some cease feeling even themselves or for themselves, dullness best solves the tease and doubt of shelling, and chances strange arithmetic come simpler when the reckoning of their shilling, they keep no check on armies' decimation. Happy are those who lose imagination, they have enough to carry with ammunition, their spirit drags no pack, their old wounds save with cold cannot more ache. Having seen all things red, their eyes are rid of the hurt of the color of blood forever. And terror's first constriction over, their senses in some scorching cautery of battle, now long since ironed, can laugh among the dying, unconcerned. Happy the soldier home, with not a notion, how somewhere every dawn some men attack, and many sighs are drained, happy the lad whose mind was never trained. His days are worth forgetting more than not. He sings along the march, which we march taciturn because of dusk, the long forlorn relentless trend from larger day to huger night. We wise, who with a thought besmirch blood all over our soul, how should we seek our task and through his blunt and lashless eyes, but through his blunt and lashless eyes? Alive, he is not vital over much, dying, not mortal over much, nor sad, nor proud, nor curious at all. He cannot tell old men's placidity from his, but cursed are dullards whom no cannon stuns, that they should be as stones, wretched are they, and mean, with paucity that never was simplicity. By choice they made themselves immune to pity and whatever mourns in man, before the last sea and the hapless stars, whatever mourns when many leave these shores, whatever shares the eternal reciprocity of tears. Dulce et decorum est. Bent double, like old beggars under sacks, not with need, coughing like hags, we curse through sludge, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep. Many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshot. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of tired, outstripped five-nines that dropped behind. Gas, gas, quick, boys! An ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea I saw him drowning. In all my dreams before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in, and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil's sick of sin, if you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling, from the froth-corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cut of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues, 
my friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children ardent for some desperate glory. The old lie, dulce et decorum est pro patria mori. Have a good day, friends.